Welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. I'm Grant. I was lucky recently to go ahead and get a copy of Gato Leader, The Battle for the Pacific from Danversum Games. Um, excited about this game. I just recently played and reviewed Sherman Leader, which came out in 2018 in January, so a couple of months ago. But this uh, Gato Leader is the an entry in the leader series that focuses on U.S. submarine actions in the Pacific theater of World War II. And the game, uh, Gato Leader, for those that speak Spanish, obviously Gato means cat, right? Um, Gato Leader, or the, the Gato class submarine was based on its first, I think its first named ship, the USS Gato. And then there were other classes of submarines as the war progressed. Uh, but that's where the name comes from, that reference to that first named vessel in the class of submarines uh, that were first used in the Pacific. So by way of introduction, uh, if you've played the Leader series, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is a campaign-driven game where you will control a group of different types of, of units or different types of, in this example, it's going to be submarines. And you are out hunting Japanese shipping, uh, merchant vessels during World War II. And you are trying to get as close to them as possible where you can identify the different ships. So you can then know what you need to shoot at. And then you have to fight off or avoid the different escort vessels, destroyers, uh, battleships, etc. The other uh, fighting class vessels that uh, would try to fight you off. So solitaire only game. So you're playing this game against the system. Uh, very well designed system that is fairly easy to follow. So if you played any other leader series game, the basics are going to be very easy for you to pick up. Uh, I've played Sherman Leader. Alexander has also played uh, several Phantom Leader. I think Hornet Leader. Uh, maybe even... Um, I can't remember. He's played several, but he likes them quite a bit. I've started to enjoy them, and I was able to get a copy of Gato Leader. Once again, came out in 2016, so this is not a new game by any means. Well, I mean, two years old, but it's a new-to-me game. I'll go ahead and get rid of the wrapping there. Uh, look at the cover. I, I will say this. I like Dan Versen games. I think they do a great job. The one area that I am always a little bit disappointed while they use great period photographs, you can see this is a photograph of a port. Uh, here's also a, a period photograph of a warship. And there you can see the Imperial uh, Japanese flag. But you'll notice that the submarine itself is kind of a, a digitized version of one. I, I would prefer to see hand-drawn or other art. I, I don't know, just, just a preference thing. Let's go ahead and flip the uh, box over to the back. Run silent, run deep. Uh, you can see this is a look at the tactical map. So you're going to know where your ship is, your submarine is in relation to your targets. You can see here's some shits that are, represent torpedoes and other things. Um, just a, a look there. You get a lot of, uh, a lot of different things. There are 165 color cards, 352 counters. Four full-color campaigns, and I'll go over what the campaigns are here in a moment. Two full-color mounted boards. Once again, one is that tactical, and I think the other is the information. You get a 10-sided die, a player log sheet, and full-color rules booklet. The game uh, is, is advertised as low to moderate. Uh, one player, obviously solitaire. Time to play is 90 minutes per campaign. So let's go ahead and open the box and get a look at what's inside Gato Leader. Uh, always, Dan Versen Games always does a great job with these games. They are very, I think, very high quality components, great production value, and I've enjoyed my plays of the ones that I own. Uh, let's go ahead and get a look at, here's the full color rule book. Once again, the same image on the cover as is on the rule book. The rules are 32 pages long, so it's not really thick. Uh, there are a lot of colored examples of different movement, different actions, how you track things. This one shows you here how to track torpedoes. 
Um, explains different damage chits that you're going to pull, which are going to damage your uh, ship, as well as, I believe, your, your crew. Uh, has some example turns, which is a good thing. There are optional rules uh, here. Rab random submarine selection. So this takes you through the entire example of play. And I found with Sherman Leader, this, this rule book was very easy to follow. The other thing that's very cool about these games is you're going to have a kind of an evaluation of your victory. What level of victory did you have? Here we'll, we'll look at this table here. But you can see that it'll give you a victory point score that if you get that, that's what you do. So... If you get 11 or under, you're dismal. 14 to 17 is poor. 18 to 23 is adequate. 24 to 27 is good. 28 plus is great. That looks like it's during a short campaign. And that's going to be tied directly to the number of ships that you are able to sink um, in your efforts. So very cool system. It, I think it works very well, particularly for a solitaire system. The AI is... Makes reasonable decisions, um, unless at least they did in Sherman Leader. I know that system's been upgraded quite a bit. Here is a look at the campaign log sheet. You're only going to get one of these, so you're going to have to take this to a copy shop or somewhere else to get a copy. So I'll have to, before I play this, I need to go ahead and get a couple copies. But there's that. Um, here's a look at the counters. They are pre-rounded counters. And actually, very, very high quality counters. Lots of information there. Um, but here you can see, there's a look at, uh, it says Torp Mod. I'm assuming that's a Torpedo Mod, but not exactly sure, or a, or a modified Torpedo. Um, the other interesting thing is your crew are going to, as they continue to fight and they encounter damage and difficulties, they're going to gain stress tokens, and we'll look at them. But here's some a look at the, some of those stress tokens. But nice looking counters, very well done. There are four sheets of counters. Here's a look at the ships. These are your Japanese mer merchant vessels, and then you've got your Japanese military vessels in red, so you can tell the difference. And then these look like you don't know what they are. They're kind of hidden markers. And then here's the different subs that you're going to, uh, the different class of subs. You've got Gudgeon, Tautog, Stingray, Salmon. And those may be the names, but I know once again, there's a Gato class submarine. I know that's a Salmon class submarine. So these may be some of the names, um, but anyway, there's the, a look at those. Here you have some tor torpedo markers. Shell markers for your guns. You have deck guns that you can use, surface and use, depending on, you know, if you find a merchant vessel out in the middle of the Pacific with no escort, you don't need to necessarily waste a, a torpedo. You can surface and shoot it with your deck guns. So anyway, different uh, different counters. Here I was talking about the damage counters. So you, you if you pull this out, you're going to have damage to your gun. Typically a gun can take one hit before it's ineffective. And then if it takes two, it's either destroyed or it has a serious impediment to firing. Same with things like engines, tubes, etc. So kind of a neat system, and it, it really builds on itself. As you get more and more damaged, it becomes more and more difficult to do well. Uh, so a very, very neat system. So in this game, the, the campaigns come in these large cards. Here are the four different campaigns. Let's look at the first one. Here is 1942, Against the Sun Operations from Pearl Harbor. So here's your campaign card that you're going to use. It's single-sided. So that's one of your two parts of your map, in essence. Um, 1942, once again, it's Operations from Pearl Harbor, but I don't know if this is, I'm, I'm trying to read where these are going. Anyway. There you go. There's a look at some of the... So here's a 44 and a 45. Here's a 1943 operations from Australia and Pearl Harbor. So there's a look at the campaign cards. They will tell you what types of ships you're hitting, the different information, pieces of information that you need to know. And we'll take it from there. There are two boards uh, that you'll use for playing. 
I'll set those out here so you can get a look at those. This is, I believe it's called the tactical board. And then this is more of a help. Uh, That's where you're gonna draw your cards from. And then you can see this board has a lot of information on the bottom about how to do things. Escort detection, detection range, movement, ship attacks against submarines. These are pieces of information that you're going to use uh, as you play the game. Here's some of the modifiers to contact determination, modifiers to submarine torpedo attacks, submarine gun attacks, etc. So it's good that you have those sheets. You're going to lay them out. You're going to play the game like this, putting your cards here, drawing cards, putting your counters on this uh, tactical display. So very well done. That's kind of the way all of these Commander series games are, are laid out. They have those uh, the, these kind of displays. And then the crux of the game is you get these three huge decks of cards. So you can see here all here are the different types of Japanese escort ships. Here's a look at at least the top card is a freighter. These are your targets. You're trying to uh, sink those. Here's the uh, art on the back of the card. You see naval card it says. And then this one looks like it's, I don't know if these are conditions. This says merchant cards. I'll go ahead and open one of these. I'm gonna to try to open the ones with the submarines contained in it, just so you can see those and get a better feel for what the game looks like. But yeah, lots of cards. There's like a hundred and some odd cards here. So once again, lots of cards means lots of variability, and it means playing it multiple times without ever, you know, really encountering the same, the same types of things. So here's a look at, uh, this is a submarine card, and you can see that the submarine has a lot of different information on it. Remember I referenced stress? So here's your stress table. When they have zero to two stress, they're going to generally be fine. And then they're going to have different modifiers here. I think this is evasion, um, different things. You can see when they get more and more stress, they become shaken. And then they're going to get some negatives. But it looks like it has the different, each boat has the different loadout uh, that it has. I'll grab another one by way of comparison. So the top one is a little, it looks like a little more of a, sturdy attack vessel. It has 10 ready torpedoes and 14 stored, whereas this one only has five ready and nine stored. So, you know, this is going to be able to go out longer, shoot more ships, do more damage. And then this one obviously is, is smaller. You can also see here's a named captain, Lieutenant James Coe. This is an S class, probably a salmon class maybe. And then you can see it's December, it's range of use in the Pacific, December 41 to April of 43. So this would be a card that you would not be able to use with the 1945 campaign. That's important. Whereas this one is April 40, 42 to August of 45. So you can kind of see that. They have a flip side. You know, and I'm, I'm not exactly sure about all the rules, but very, very nice looking. Um, and there are a ton of those, man. There, there looks like there's about 50 different submarines that are available. All different types, different sizes. And once again, they have double-sided. Sometimes you'll notice up in the corner, it says radar. That's a special ability as that submarine uh, increases. And I think you use your experience points to increase the level of your subs. So that's, that's really cool. That's a look at the sub cards. Um... I already mentioned, here's some of the cruisers, not the cruisers, the freighter. Yeah, these are cruisers that are going to be coming, you know, to try and destroy you. Fleet Escort A Destroyer is another destroyer, etc. There's a look at some of those Japanese fleet escort cards. There are others. There are naval cards and event cards. I'm not going to open up all of those. But this game, these games are very deep. I feel like these games are very, uh, very involved, but I like them because they're very structured. I feel like if you're familiar with the rules and you read through them, you can play this game very easily 
and you're, you're going to have a very enjoyable time about it. I've enjoyed my, I've played Sherman Leader three or four times now. Um, now I want to play Gato Leader and experience this. But yeah, this is a look at Gato Leader from Danvers and Games. I think a, a wonderful addition to the Leader series. Lots of great components, very high quality production. I think the gameplay is fantastic. I think for a solitaire game, you're going to get a lot of choices out of this. And you're also going to become attached to your individual crews. That was at least my experience in Sherman Leader and something I enjoyed very much about the game. When those crews die, though, it, it can be painful. And I know that sounds a little ridiculous, but that, that's the sign to me of a good solo game because you're looking for a narrative. You're looking for it building something that you can feel uh, and get into and really get involved and immersed in. So thanks for watching. That's a look at Gato Leader, The Battle for the Pacific from Dan Verson Games. I've been Grant for the PlayersAid.com. If you enjoyed the video, please like it. If you enjoy our channel, please subscribe. And if you want to do some more in-depth reading on our thoughts about games, including reviews, session reports, strategy articles and guides, unboxing videos, interviews with designers, etc., please visit our website at theplayersaid.com. Thank you.